Hey friends, Derek from Tech Connection here with another video. And this time we're gonna talk about how to test fiber cables with our optical power meter. So in a previous video, I talked a little bit about this knockoff tester you can get versus a very expensive fluke tester. And with this one, uh, it's got a function, which you no doubt noticed when you were shopping uh, to test fiber optic cables. And a lot of people have contacted me, including some of my own uh, employees, uh, have asked, how in the heck does this thing work? It's not immediately obvious how this thing is supposed to function. So let me walk you through it. In order to do the testing with this, you'll need to run down to your local cable store and pick up a couple different kinds of adapters. These are single mode. Uh, you'll also need them for multi-mode if you're looking to test both kinds of fibers. Uh, here at our shop, we run all kinds. So we'll do mostly single mode when we're going between buildings or when we're going from one floor to another floor. Uh, we'll do multi-mode when we're going within the cabinet. Uh, we'll do multi-mode when we're going within the same cabinet. So if you're going from one server to a switch or between two iSCSI SANs or something like that, uh, it's very common to use the high-end multi-mode to link those systems together, but it's not very common to drag multi-mode, say a thousand feet and try to link up at 10 gigs or 40 gigs in that manner. Uh, it's far more appropriate to use the single mode for that. So in my office, I carry adapters for both kinds. It's a little bit cumbersome to have so many adapters. You buy the ones you need, of course. Don't, uh, don't let me stop you. So I've got one SC to LC, one SC SC, and then I've got my cable under test. So I've got a length of cable that I want to check. Is this a good cable or not? That's where this little fella comes in. And I need one more piece in order for this to work. I need an SFP and a switch, or because I don't have one of those, I'm gonna use a media converter. So I've got a very simple media converter that takes an SFP, SFP slots inside here, and then it is transmitting light always. We'll take our tester down to the optical power meter mode and press okay. And here we're going to see a couple of things. One of them is the frequency of light that we're testing. So this device can test multi-mode and single mode. And in those situations, there's more than one frequency that you might potentially be checking. So you can cycle through them from 850 nanometers, 1300 nanometers, 1310. Which one do you use? Well, if you break out your SFP and you look very closely on the label, most SFPs tell you exactly what they're transmitting at and you set the power meter to match that. If you don't see anything, which is sometimes the case, you're gonna go on to Google and you're gonna look it up. Uh, there's a standard, there's a spreadsheet that you can get. It's got everything under uh, one big listing. I usually just look it up case by case. I don't try to keep that on hand or anything, but you could stick it in your toolbox if uh, you're using this a lot. Let me show you the single mode SFP and how it looks. So I slot it into my media converter and then I'm going to take my patch cord and I'm going to plug it in to the transmit port on my media converter. Always keep these dust covers handy. You're going to need them again in a moment. Never let your fiber get dirty. So if you plug the SFPs transmit into your power meter, you'll see here that there is in fact light being received and there's a number being shown as reference. It's not super important what that reference number is at the time that you first are testing. What you're looking to do right now is you're trying to get a clean signal between your tester and your source. So if your source is an SFP or a switch or a router or something with a transmitter in it that you can plug into, you wanna read the light level as close to the source as possible and that becomes your reference. So on this particular tester, once I see that I've got something, you're gonna arrow down and select reference, and then you're gonna hold the OK button for just a moment. You'll see then that there is a reference number that shows. Now your tester is essentially calibrated to the light level in the best case scenario. Then you're gonna walk your light level to the other end of this cable that you wanna test. So I've got 100 feet here, but if it was going say a kilometer, you're gonna walk this thing all the way to the other end. Before you head out, 
patch in the cable you want to test. You want the situation to be that the source is transmitting all the way along the route that you want to check. So at the other end, I've got an SC connector. I'm going to go ahead and remove my dust cover and I'm going to attach a coupler to that. That way I can use this small patch cord at the other end. That small patch cord I'm plugging into my power meter. Now you're going to see on your display that there's a new number. The reference number never changes because that's best case scenario. The number that's showing now is the difference of light between the source as it was originally tested and the source as it is now after going through this long hundred feet, how much light made it to the other end. They give you a measurement of how much loss there was. So on this test, I'm showing about 0.75 dB loss. That's a real good number. So what numbers are we looking for? What do these numbers mean in terms of dB loss? Are we doing well? Are we doing bad? Do I need to clean this? Your most common uh, source of any kind of loss is going to be dirt on the connectors. So you want to keep a cleaner handy in case you need to wipe these down. Anytime you've got a connector like this, which you might have at a bulkhead at each side. So if you've got one building where you've broken out into a sort of wall mounted patch panel and you've got an SC or LC connector there and then the cable runs underneath the ground goes to another building and then you've got another bulkhead there and there's an LC or an SC connector and on both ends you patch in with a short cord so you should be looking at 0.75 or thereabouts in terms of DV loss for a total amount of 1.5 across the entire permanent link. For single mode, if you can keep total DV loss under two, you should have no problem doing 10 gigs easily whenever you're going between buildings, even at far distances of more than a mile. Now, after you've tested your cable, you've only tested one of the fibers. You'd want to have your partner help you out by going back to the source, taking this patch cord, and many people don't know this, but these actually open up and split. You would reverse them so that you put the other fiber on the transmit. Then, at the far end, you move your coupler to the other side, and you test again. It's real easy to have a clean pass on transmit, but a fail on receive. So you have to test both of these fibers fully. Once you finish testing this end of the cable, it's good practice to reverse the light source and the tester to the opposite ends of the cable and test again just to be sure that your cable is functional in both directions. After you've recorded all measurements, return the dust covers so that nothing changes between the time that you've tested it and the time that the user needs to use this network. Okay, so you've finished doing all your testing and you've recorded all your numbers. Nothing is above 2.0 loss, so you're fairly confident that these are good cables, but how can you be sure? Does this prove anything or not? So what this proves when you do this test is that that frequency of light is received at both ends of the cable safely. However, it's not a for sure thing that your link will work. It's a good indicator that it probably will and that the cable is probably just fine. But you can't be perfectly sure without running a certification test, which is unfortunately a much more expensive machine. The inside plant installer will probably come after you, run a tier one certification on it after the fact, and that will actually test, does this do 10 gigs? Are we losing any data in transmission, in transit? Are we getting bit error rates, retransmits? Is there high reflectance at a certain connector, etc.? So this first part, this is just sort of laying the groundwork that your trunk is good, but there's a lot more that can go on at the connector, at the switch, uh, at the bends that you have to pay more a little, little bit more attention to. So this isn't the end all be all, but it's a really good start. As you take more fiber jobs and you get a little bit better at your craft, it's well worth investing in at least a knockoff tier one tester. It doesn't have to be amazing or anything. Uh, you can eventually get that big fluke that you've got your eye on. I'm Derek from Tech Connection, and thanks for watching this video.